Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. I'm the instructor of the Big Data Applications and Analytics course, sometimes called X Informatics, and we're doing health or medical informatics in this uh, lesson, which is lesson two of the whole uh, section slash unit. And um, let's move on to see what's in lesson two in the, in the uh, next sl slide, which just uh, States rather sparsely what, what we have. Uh, it just covers trends of costs and types of healthcare, the overall situation we're trying to deal with. We mentioned positively things like the Government Brain Initiative, role of social media, and possibly it's good that the population is aging. For people like me who are aging, and maybe I feel good about that. Okay, so let's move on with lesson two. All right, here is the, some overall status of healthcare. It's a seven, it's very high, a fraction of the gross domestic product is devoted to healthcare, 17% or $2.8 trillion. Um, and it's increased a factor of two as a percentage of GDP in 35 years. It is thought that 27% of that money is wasted in some sense. Either unnecessary services, lots and lots of bureaucracy, missed opportunity for prevention. I'm surprised this is actually so small. And uh, the largest amount is inefficient delivery. Actually, none of it's fraud. That's sort of oh, interesting that fraud is, uh, doesn't appear on this list. Maybe it really is small. If you look at who pays for it, some of it's paid by um, uh, employers, 620 billion, um, which is up 28% in five years. That's um, quite high, and so it says that 67% of company financial officers indicate that healthcare is a significant problem for the company. Um, so currently, for 25% uh, of family income goes into healthcare and Estimated in 2015 versus 18% in 2005. And if you look at um, the top 5% of consumers, those with lots of chronic illnesses, such as too many courses to teach and things like that, they spend 50% of the healthcare dollars. That's the 2009 statistics. And 50% of personal bankruptcy are driven by healthcare costs. These are just a collection from our favorite source, KPCB, of anecdotes or, or what have you of um, about healthcare. So 75% of healthcare expenditures is on chronic conditions with cancer, diabetes, and heart, and hypertension and stroke has um, as these conditions. One, 50% of Americans have at least one chronic condition. One in four has two or more. And 32% of Americans were obese in 2008. And that was up from 15% in 1990. And all of this is due to our bad behavior. We are bad people. So we ignore all the ways we could uh, solve these problems. Um, we listen to silly videos about big data rather than running around the track. We do all sorts of naughty things. And uh, so that's these 52% who did not do what they ought to do with physical activity. And also 50% of those with chronic conditions <sighs> with um, that don't take the right take the right medicine and the hundred billion dollars avoidable hospital hospitalizations. So we're making our own problem. Here are some positive trends looking on the bright side. So we have people using electronic health records. 84% of hospitals and related areas are, are using EHRs and over 50% over of office-based practices. People, of course, like, health, like email, 62% for healthcare concerns. So it's good to receive your email from the doctor. Hi, we got your report. You have another couple of days to live. Please come and see me. All right. 
Um, there's lots of money being invested in digital health. It went up 39% uh, in, uh, to, from 2012 to 2013 to 1.9 billion. And quality is being uh, emphasized over quantity. Um, payers are in incentivized to engage patients to improve care, to focus on outcomes and reduce costs. Provide, so that's the uh, insurance companies, the providers, the hospitals are shifted to, to value-based and rather than fee-for-service payments. Employers are lowering costs by offering services to improve engagement and choices and care. 46% of employers will enact participatory and outcome-based incentives like weight loss and cholesterol levels. By 2015, 60% will price um, transpa transparent tools from health plans. So, here are various particular things about um, employer engagement platforms gives a four to one return on investment. Here is a comment about uh, telemedicine, $798 savings per consultation over 30 days. And here is some comment about uh, this Mango Health has got an application which increases to 84% the adherence to, to a certain class of drugs. And here we have a chronic disease platform which is improving diabetes, diabetes care. All right, so we've seen this diagram in various forms. Now there's a slightly specious reduction here. Um, which is not present on NIH's plot. NIH's plot continues more, rather more discreetly. We have that somewhere else. Um, but anyway, this comes from the the thousand uh, dollar genome number, which comes from a, a slightly exotic uh, piece of technology, uh, which is not clearly the deployable technology. But anyway, we'll soon be at less than $1,000, which is pretty interesting. So it's believed that genomic genetics and genomic testing can give you a new paradigm of precision medicine that is based on quantitative and evidence-based science. So that's encouraging. But still, I don't think the you know, genomes are a critical part of the health healthcare practice today. Here is this $1,000 genome. We, uh, there's this um, device, set of uh, Illumina devices here. And here's um, Forbes article announcing the $1,000 genome. And it's 2014, January 14th. So this comes from this SlideShare. Uh, um, Article, slide share presentation by Stephen Tucker here, which is full of useful things. Here we are, we all, uh, well, obviously we're all getting older, but there are more of us are getting older and staying alive even when we're 85 or more, which is obviously having some impact on, on um, healthcare, because the older you are, the more likely you are to have made some of these naughty, had some prior to me, the, Unavoidable or avoidable, and therefore you're going to have more things to want to, to worry about. Here's some comment on the quality of um, U.S. healthcare, which doesn't look good. Here we are at 17% GDP, $7,000 spent per person, or 7,300. And here's our life expectancy, less than 80. And up here we have all these other countries, almost all other countries, in fact which are actually higher life expectancy. So, Korea, United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, Norway, Switzerland, France, Australia, Iceland, and Japan. Uh, so, that's an interesting feature. Presumably says we spend our money in different ways and do a different optimization. Uh, so healthcare data is enormous and very valuable in trying to address this issue, either finding out why we're here, not, not we're better, Good to be over. Maybe we can spend that amount of money, but we ought to be over here. Maybe, or at least over here. 90 or something. Okay. But here's some interesting comment on the data. We have 500 petabytes of medical data in 2012, and it's meant to reach uh, 25,000 uh, petabytes in 2020. 
pretty big growth. Here is a goal of big data and health plan, health uh, care. Uh, we have EH, we have electronic health records. Uh, we have public health studies and epidemiology. We have genomics. I would actually add images here. We have images. Don't quite know where they appear here. Because they're a large part of the high data volumes. We have behavior running around the track. This gives you, then you run your analytics and you get insights which improve health and lower costs. That's the hope, of course. We went to try to find ways of putting all this together to run the best big data analytics and get the right answer. And of course, this is the goal is personalized medicine. And it's meant to impact all, we're meant to be able to use big data essentially at all parts of the process. Uh, I mean, the patient's data itself, the doctor's store of wisdom based on previous data, insurance companies' input to be able to decide what to pay, and uh, hospitals, of course, that's similar to doctors. Okay, here is another trend, uh, government brain initiative, $100 million research initiative, understand the human brain. It is much larger, in fact, in Europe than this. I think it's well over a billion euros there. And uh, it's uh, slightly controversial, I think. It's not clear that uh, people agree that this is going to actually have the impact that is claimed. And um, it's obviously meant to work on particular brain disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, and trauma-related injury. And of course, the brain is notable for producing huge amounts of data. It's a giant, 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 giant neural net. So it's full of data which can be measured. Much more data probably than most other parts of the, the human body, um, which is smoother. The point about the neural net is that neural net is sort of presumably um, Jiggling around, and each neuron has got, in principle, new independent information. So, obviously, it involves NSF, NIH, DARPA, and other other organizations. All right, here's a nice concept that, um, which is a general concept of visualization. We actually did this in sports informatics. We showed how. Um, in sports informatics, you can use spatial visualization. This is space. And you put layers. In the case of Google Maps, the layers are the streets and the weather and the traffic and things like that. And in the <coughs> in the case of tennis, it was the shots. In the case of uh, actually basketball and football, it was also the shots. And of course, you can put the people and uh, all sorts of other things. But here, the overlays are less obvious, and in fact, there's probably an interesting, uh, there are people who do research on the right way to use this concept of a space, which for people to look at it is preferably 2D and at worst 3D. And then on that space, you have overlays with lots of different information. And here's some things here, which we can do, patient data. And we have patients, patient data, genome. I don't know some of these things exactly what they're responding, what they do. You can look them up and see what's meant to be in these letters. But the concept of a visualization of this is pretty interesting. And good thing to see what we can do. All right, uh, here about medical errors. Um, so this is uh, a number of deaths due to medical errors. It's uh, unfortunately this latest estimate here is over 400,000, so um, this is uh, obviously outweighs other forms of uh, death, so it's bad. Here's a nifty uh, um, title page for time, Can Google Solve Death? As it solved every other problem we have. Um, and um, so Google has health initiatives. Some of them they just uh, re restarted, but anyway, they purchased this company, Calico. And um, 
it's going to uh, have an R&D facility. Um, uh, focusing on using data to solve solve um, health problems. Here's a here's the final slide. It notes that um, if you look at uh, data from like Twitter messages or or trends, which are effectively presumably either Twitter or just more general search queries you will find that they're strongly correlated. The same is true with earthquakes. Whenever you have events, or you know, I don't know, winning, winning spot events, all these events are highly correlated with peaks in appropriately selected Twitter, uh, Twitter uh, messages. So whether that's actually useful, it's nifty, it's certainly in fun to know. Whether it's actually technically useful, I think is not quite so clear, but uh, it's certainly worth knowing. So that's the uh, so that's the end of this lesson, which discussed some overall trends, which is framing the big data in uh, in the health uh, and medicine discussion. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox in the Big Data Applications Analytics course, signing off at the end of lesson two. Thank you.